narrative recap tier. Today, I'm going to explain a crime drama film called, Frank and Lola, which has an obsessive man flying between Las Vegas and Paris in an attempt to uncover the truth behind his girlfriend. Tangled in a web of temptation, betrayal, vengeance, and he said, she sades, the story takes different, unexpected turns to strip the couple bare and reveal their deepest misgivings. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Love can be the one thing that can save you from ceaseless misery, but it can also be the thing that will introduce you to an even deeper depth of despair. For Frank and Lola, love may be one and the same. One Halloween night, Las Vegas chef Frank Riley meets a younger and mysterious girl, Lola. She goes into Frank's restaurant looking distraught, and Frank can't help but notice her. Frank cooks for Lola, and he later takes her home with him. Lola tells him she once lived in Rue Gallo, and Frank shares that he learned to cook when he was a kid. He dropped out of high school then used the money he saved from baking pizzas in Queens to buy a ticket to France. When Lola compliments Frank's accomplishments, Frank kisses her. The two sleep together, eventually falling in love with each other. As beautiful as they are, Frank and Lola both seem to have led troubled life. There's somberly enigmatic Lola, with her subtly distraught demeanor, and Frank, who hints at a weathered past forged by keeping himself afloat from one cutthroat place to another. And though they've only just met, perhaps they found a special solace in each other. During a dinner with Lola's mother, Patricia, Lola wonders why she is in the city. Patricia brags that Architectural Digest is sending her to Tina Turner's house in France to write about it. She'll be riding Tina's private jet, and after that, Patricia's heading off to Paris for some fun. She adds that she'll be staying at her ex-boyfriend Alan's spare flat for the night, then gives his regards to Lola. When Patricia and Frank talk about how he got into cooking, Patricia continues bragging, and this time, she mentions that she'll bring Wayne Newton to Frank's restaurant the next day before she leaves, and Frank is happy about it. Lola, however, is not and tells her mother not to be patronizing. Even if Patricia's her mother, it seems that Lola can't help but feel threatened by her. After all, Patricia's a bit too haughty and a bit too overdone that it almost feels like she's purposely coming on too strong to Frank. On their way home, Lola asks Frank if he falls in love easily, and when he says he doesn't, Lola admits she isn't sure if she'll be any good at being in a relationship. Through a memory of the night they met, it's revealed that Frank admitted that he was once married, but it didn't work out. Still, he assured Lola that no matter what she was going through, he'd be there for her. Sometime later on, Lola gets a tattoo of Frank's name. Even the two of them are aware that the relationship they entered is something of a whirlwind. Lola's self-doubts are creeping to her, and for whatever reason, she doubts her ability to be a good partner. Despite it all, Frank and Lola still find ways to assure each other and focus on the good. Frank secretly watches as Lola talks to Keith Winkleman, who offers her a job as a fashion designer. Lola is hesitant, thinking that he just wants to take her home, and Keith notices this. He clarifies that she has to pass the interview first and that he doesn't sleep with his employees. He then gives Lola his business card before leaving. Once he's gone, Frank calls Lola to ask if she's with Patricia. When Lola responds, Frank suddenly sits beside her, rudely asking who she was talking to. Lola insists that Keith's harmless, but she doesn't tell him that he offered her a job. She then asks if Frank is okay, and he informs her that his restaurant now has new owners and chefs. Sad for her boyfriend, Lola comforts him, reminding him that he knew it was coming. After a tiring day at work, Frank comes home and finds Lola talking to her new boss. Frank is disappointed that Lola didn't say that she planned to accept Keith's offer, and Lola argues that it's because she knew he'd be mad. Lola points out that she won't be directly working with Keith, but that doesn't make Frank feel any better. However, he still suggests celebrating before asking Lola to remind Keith that she's already taken. The two later go to a tiki bar, where Frank happily watches Lola dance. Evidently, Frank has seen better days. The different pockets of his world are crumbling all around him, and the slabs from the wreckage keep piling up on the scale of his inadequacies. With the way life's going for Frank, he must have felt inadequate. He went through a failed marriage, he lost his restaurants, and in his mind, some Keith Winkleman is besting him when it comes to Lola. This is proving to be a hard time for them both, especially since insecurity has a way of making the world look like it's out against you. The next day, Frank reminds Lola that his friend, Will, is going to pick them at 7 p.m. to avoid traffic. Lola promises to be on time, and when Frank leaves for work, Lola receives a call from someone. In the evening, Frank gets worried when Lola doesn't show up on time. He then tells his friends to go ahead without him and Lola, but they say they'll wait. When Lola finally shows up, crying, Frank insists that his friends leave before he and Lola go back to their apartment. Pouring herself a drink, Lola asks Frank to take a seat, so he does. While Lola is saying that she thinks she made a mistake, their conversation is interrupted when Lola's phone rings. Frank answers it then puts it on speaker when the caller asks for the owner of the phone. Lola starts crying again, and when she talks to the caller, Frank learns that Lola was at Encore with another man. Disappointed, Frank continues to listen to the conversation, and when Lola finally ends the call, Frank informs her that Encore used to be the Desert Inn. He says he worked there for five years, and sometimes, at night, a wealthy woman would take him up to her room to sleep with him. Hurting, Frank emphasizes that he slept with some gorgeous women who weren't worried that their mommy was going to steal him away from them. 
he adds that just two hours ago, he would have crawled through glass for her, and while he was worried that something happened to her, she was just sleeping with another man in a fancy hotel. With Lola's sudden revelation, both Frank and Lola's worries are coming to life. This may be what Lola meant when she said that she wasn't sure if she'd be any good as a girlfriend. Likewise, Frank must feel like he was on the right track when he was being jealous over Keith. And since betrayals only hit as hard as the love and care you invested in the person, Frank is completely hurting from this to the point that he would go as far as to take a jab at Lola's own insecurities with her mother. All this just adds another notch to his belt of inadequacies. Sobbing, Lola tries to deny this, but Frank won't hear her out. He wants to know who Lola slept with, and although Lola won't say the man's name, she confesses that he's from California and has already left town. Enraged, Frank immediately breaks up with Lola since he feels like he's just one of her flings, but Lola won't accept it, claiming that he's different from the others. Insulted and betrayed, Frank storms out of the apartment and goes to a bar to drink. There, he sees a man hurting his girlfriend, and when the couple leaves, Frank follows them and beats the guy out of anger. Frank is sent to jail, but Lola is quick to bail him out. Frank and Lola go to a diner in the morning, where she confesses to being violated by her mother's ex-boyfriend, Alan Larson. It happened over the summer, just before she came to Las Vegas, and when Frank asks if she's told her mother about it, Lola says she didn't. Feeling sorry for Lola, Frank asks her to tell him more about Alan. According to Lola, Alan comes from a rich Swedish family that lost all their money. After going broke, Alan moved to France to start over, and he wrote a book about his experience. When his book became a hit, Alan left Patricia and found himself a wealthy French wife who lets him do whatever he wants. Guilty, Lola says her experience with Alan has changed her in a bad way, and that's why she slept with someone else. This may sound like Lola's trying to escape the culpability for the way she hurt Frank, but it isn't. She even clarifies that she's not making an excuse, she just wants Frank to know why she is the way she is. People are more than their traumatic experiences, but it would be a lie and flat-out irresponsible to say that everyone can walk out of a devastating occurrence completely unscathed and unchanged. Trauma works in nebulous ways that hijack a person's thought and actions to make them do things that they can't even explain. Clearly, Lola doesn't like what she did to Frank at all, and this must be hard for her since she hurt not just herself but the man she loves. After making up with Lola and going home together, Frank starts his research on Alan. One night, after being hired to cook for Keith and his associates, Frank is shocked to see that Lola is among the guests. Lola follows Frank back to the kitchen and tells him that the house belongs to Keith's partner. Irritated, Frank asks Lola if she's Keith's date for the night, but Lola says she isn't. Keith then comes to the kitchen, too, and compliments Frank's cooking. But he grows surprised when he learns that Frank is Lola's boyfriend, so he wonders why he's never heard of him before and why Frank doesn't have his own restaurant. Lola explains that Frank used to have his own place, and now, he's currently in between restaurants. Impressed, Keith offers to make some calls to his friends and see what he can do for Frank. However, Frank doesn't seem too happy to be around Keith, so he just stares at him. Noticing this, Keith excuses himself from the kitchen. Once he's gone, Frank asks Lola why she hasn't mentioned him to her boss, and Lola defensively says Keith has never asked her about her personal life. As he listens to his girlfriend, Frank accidentally cuts his hand, and Lola immediately helps him. Naturally, Frank is more suspicious of Lola now more than ever. While he understood her when she opened up to him, there's already a strain in their relationship, whether they acknowledge it or not. As much as people would like to give trust away like it's candy, trust is an earned thing. Still, it's hard to tell if Frank wouldn't be this uptight if Lola never slept with someone else. While taking a shower, Frank is surprised to receive a call from Keith. Excited, Keith informs him that he's secured an audition for him, where Frank will cook for Henri Ricard in his mansion in Paris and get a chance to be the executive chef of Ricard's soon-to-open restaurant. Frank is stunned, and Keith assures him that he's already taken care of everything. Frank is still in disbelief, but he thanks Keith for the great opportunity. After the phone call, Frank finds Alan's place using Lola's address book. Before leaving for Paris, Frank tells Lola that he wishes he could go back in time to protect her from Alan, but Lola doesn't say anything. When Frank's cab arrives, Lola reminds him that she loves him, and with that, Frank finally leaves. On the day of his audition, Frank is picked up by Ricard's attach, Charles. The two of them walk to the mansion, where Charles briefs him about the ingredients to be used and the number of people who will eat. He then takes Frank to the kitchen, where his sous chef, Khalil, is waiting for him. Upon seeing the ingredients, Frank feels confident that he'll be able to make a spectacular dish. When Charles leaves the chefs to their business, Frank shows Khalil the truffle he's been keeping before telling him what dish they'll be making. Using the truffle that he brought himself speaks a lot about Frank's character. He's a man with initiative who won't let rules and instruction limit him. He does what he feels is right, and if that means overstepping some boundaries and agreements, then so be it. Frank will take matters into his own hands as he sees fit. When it's finally time to present their dish to Ricard, the man is disappointed that Frank has chosen to give him roasted chicken. As Frank and Khalil wait in the kitchen, Charles arrives with the verdict and asks if he's used truffle. When Frank says he did, Charles tells him that that wasn't the agreement before thanking him for his time. That night, Frank goes to Alan's place and follows him to a nearby bar. Posing as Keith, Frank approaches Alan and pretends to be a fan of his book, saying he studied it in college at Northwestern University. 
Trying to get close to Alan, Frank offers to buy him a drink, but he politely refuses. Instead, Alan offers to show Frank around Paris, and Frank accepts. He then takes Frank to his place so they can have a few more drinks. There, Alan tells Frank that he only stays in that place when he needs it, meaning when he wants to have fun with other women. Frank wants to know if his wife doesn't mind, and Alan says she doesn't, as long as he follows certain rules. Alan also adds that his wife has the same privileges, and when his phone rings, he excuses himself from the room. Though Lola never once asked Frank to pursue Alan for her, Frank doesn't seem like he'll be at peace until he confronts the man who hurt Lola badly. Of course, Frank can only be there for revenge. Perhaps he believes that he's here to give Lola's tragedy justice. Either way, he's there because he wants to be and not because Lola wanted him to do anything about Alan. While Alan is gone, Frank takes out the knife he's been hiding. Upon his return, Alan asks Frank a few questions about his college life. When Frank answers them, Alan deduces that Frank never went to Northwestern University, and he's not actually a fan. Busted, Frank shows Alan his knife, telling him he can't just force someone to sleep with him and get away with it. Shocked, Alan denies forcing any woman to sleep with him before asking Frank to follow him to his bedroom. Realizing that Frank is connected to Lola, Alan plays a video of her, where she makes out with another woman while taking orders from Alan. When Alan pauses the video, Frank tells him to continue playing it before tossing his knife away. Alan then leaves Frank to watch the footage, and once he's done, Frank just sits in a chair, saying nothing. Alan admits to Frank that he once broke the rules with Lola, implying that his feelings for her are real. He then apologizes to Frank for having to see the tape, and when Frank apologizes in turn for not knowing the whole story, Alan tells him that Lola can be very convincing. When Alan asks if Frank and Lola are still together, Frank doesn't answer the question and asks instead who the other girl in the video was. Alan tells him she was just a girl from a club before inviting Frank to join him there. Somehow, Frank doesn't consider that what Alan and Lola said can both be true. She could have consensually slept with Alan one day, and the next, he could have forced himself onto her. Now, Frank is justified in doubting what Lola said when presented with new information, but that being said, the way he's easily swayed to another man's side speaks to the unnuanced way he processes things. After a few hours, Alan tells Frank that he has an early appointment. While giving Frank his business card, Alan says that he'll be coming to Las Vegas for business and that he'll be at the Encore Hotel. Before Alan leaves, Frank thanks him for telling him the truth. Once Alan is gone, Frank is taken home by a rich woman together with a younger lady. The three of them take some pills before sleeping together. After returning to his accommodation, Frank receives a call from Ricard. The man tells Frank that the restaurant he plans to open is big and that there will be a lot of visibility. When Ricard asks if Frank can handle the pressure and the responsibility, Frank curtly says he can. Back in Las Vegas, Frank tells Lola that he got the job. However, he remains cold to her, barely uttering a word. When Lola finally learns that Alan and Frank met in Paris, she can't believe that Frank has seen her video. As Lola sobs, Frank tells her that Alan took him to his favorite club and that he went home with two French women. This seems to be a growing pattern with Frank. When he gets hurt by Lola, he hurts her right back in a way that puts him one step ahead of her. After learning that she slept with someone at a hotel, he had to one-up her by saying he's also slept with multiple women who don't have mommy issues in that hotel. When he learned that Lola slept with Alan and made out with a girl, he had a drugged up three-way with two women. It's almost as if he can't have his own sensual conquests be undermined by a woman who's fresh out of college, so it has to be clear that whatever Lola's done, he's done, too. Disappointed and done with Lola's lies, Frank tells her he'll come back for his stuff the next day before leaving. Frank stays in a hotel that night, drinking his sorrows away. When Frank returns to the apartment, Lola reveals that the woman he slept with was Alan's wife, Claire. She says Alan played him and that he got his wife to misbehave so she'll allow him to do whatever he wants. Unbothered, Frank asks if Alan was the man she slept with at Encore, and Lola confirms it. Finally, Lola admits the truth, saying that she went to Paris to study. Since Alan was the only person she knew there, he gave her a place to stay. Lola says that when she woke up one day, Alan had already tied her hands and feet to the bed. Lola insists that Alan forced himself on her, but the problem was she fell in love with him after that. Lola then found out she was pregnant, and Alan just disappeared. When Lola informed Claire about her pregnancy, she wrote Lola a $400,000 check to leave Paris, telling her not to go through with her pregnancy. Lola left Paris a week later and came to Las Vegas, and that's when she met Frank. On the day she slept with Alan, Lola says the man was begging for her forgiveness. She, however, had no intention of sleeping with him, but she just shut down and let him do as he pleases anyway. Alan and Lola's accounts of their relationship pained each other in a very different light. However, both of them can still be true, but Alan had chosen to omit the part where he took advantage of a vulnerable girl with no one else to turn to. Again, trauma affects people differently, and it can even manifest in ways that are practically impossible to decipher. Once it was over, Lola recalls that she started to panic, realizing what she'd just destroyed. Frank is about to say something, but Lola cuts him off and tells him she didn't even think he'd take her back, but he did. Realizing he's mistaken, Frank asks Lola why she didn't just tell him about it before, but instead of answering, Lola demands to know why he tracked down Alan. 
Frank apologizes to Lola, but as Lola cries, she tells her boyfriend that it may be time they let each other go. As Frank prepares for the opening of Ricard's new restaurant, he calls Charles to inform him he wants to come to Paris to cook the whole menu for Ricard. A week later, Frank is in Paris, and Ricard praises him for his spectacular cooking. That night, Frank meets up with Alan's wife, Claire, to ask if Lola was telling the truth about everything. Without beating around the bush, Claire confirms Lola's story, and just when Frank is about to leave, he tells Claire that Alan came to see Lola in December. Doubtful, Claire claims that Alan's heart is with her, and he isn't that reckless to make another mistake with Lola. To prove that what he's saying is true, Frank asks Claire to go with him to Alan's flat and ask him about it, but Claire says Alan is on a business trip in Chicago. Realizing that Alan is probably in Las Vegas, Frank leaves in haste. Finally, Frank has a third person corroborate Lola's story. Without Claire, he'd be stuck in a never-ending loop of he said, she says that'll just keep him guessing and hurting. But out of everyone there, Claire is the one who's been played the fool the most. Despite the numerous liberties she keeps giving her husband, he still went ahead and broke the single rule she set up for him. After tracking down Alan in Las Vegas, Frank sees him outside their apartment. He's trying to reconcile with Lola, but Lola just turns him away. With this, Alan leaves and goes back to his suite at Encore. As Alan rests, he receives a photo and a letter from Lola, asking him to meet her at the hotel's new restaurant. Alan goes there without hesitation but gets confused when Frank shows up instead. After revealing his real name to Alan, he asks him to have a drink with him. As they go along, Frank firmly tells Alan to go back to Claire and leave Lola alone, but Alan refuses to listen. He admits that Claire is just a thing he tolerates while Lola is his prize. So much for having a love that's true for Lola. At his core, Alan's just someone who wants to have his cake and eat it, too. He doesn't care about anyone else, not even Lola. Alan just wants to keep having his way with her. Without gracing Alan with a response, Frank gives him a ticket to Paris, saying that his plane will leave in four hours. When Alan refuses to take it, Frank grows impatient and points to the CCTV cameras in the restaurant, saying they record audio, too. Since Claire gave Frank her email address, Frank threatens Alan that he'll send his wife a video of their conversation. Pissed over being outsmarted, Alan attacks Frank from behind and continues to hit him while he's down. With Frank downed and beaten, Alan turns to leave, but Frank suddenly pulls his leg. This causes Alan to hit the floor, allowing Frank to punch him repeatedly in the face before dragging him into the kitchen. When he's done washing up, Frank tells Alan he'll drive him to the airport, warning him that he'd better disappear. After some time, Keith's company holds a dinner party at Frank's new restaurant. Frank is a little sad that Lola isn't there yet, but when she finally arrives, Lola congratulates him for his achievement. When everyone finally leaves, Frank tells Lola that he's finally managed to get Alan out of their lives for good. Frank implies that he wants her back, and when he asks Lola if she still loves him, Lola says she wouldn't be there if she didn't. With promises of changing, Frank tells her that when he returns and she's still there, then that means that she wants to get back with him, too. Frank changes his clothes, and when he goes back outside, he is crushed to see that Lola isn't there. However, Frank is just unaware that Lola is standing by the door, hiding from him. If we go back to the reason why Lola had to part ways with Frank, she told him that it may be time they let each other go. And stepping back farther, Lola already expressed her doubts about being good at being in a relationship while Frank promised that no matter what she's going through, he'll be there for her. For some time, it felt as if Lola was proven right and Frank's promise kept being put through the test. A lot of their deeper conflict stemmed from Frank acting as if the tragedy that Lola went through was an affront and a transgression against him. Instead of being there for her, he kept focusing on Alan and uncovering the truth behind them. Because, again, it felt like an attack against Frank's own ego. While Lola's insecurities made her doubt herself, Frank's insecurities made him doubt Lola. Even until the very end, he gave her the chance to leave even after Lola said that she loved him. With the mild ambiguity of the film's ending, it can still be contested if the two got back together. But as they stand, the important thing is that Frank and Lola need to confront their own selves to make their relationship truly work. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.